Hello, this is Crystal Sandage, and thank you for joining me for this week's First Chapter Friday. Today I will be reading from the first chapter of T.J. Clune's The House in the Cerulean Sea. Chapter 1 Oh dear, Linus Baker said, wiping the sweat from his brow. This is most unusual. That was an understatement. He watched in rapt wonder as an 11-year-old girl named Daisy levitated blocks of wood high above her head. The blocks spun in slow, concentric circles. Daisy frowned in concentration. The tip of her tongue stuck out between her teeth. It went on for a good minute before the blocks slowly lowered to the floor. Her level of control was astounding. I see, Linus said, furiously scribbling on his pad of paper. They were in the master's office, a tidy room with government-issued brown carpet and old furniture. The walls were lined with terrible paintings of lemurs in various poses. The master had showed them off proudly, telling Linus painting was her passion, and that if she hadn't become the master of this specific orphanage, she'd be traveling with a circus as a lemur trainer or even have opened up a gallery to share her artwork with the world. Linus believed the world was better off with the paintings staying in this room. But he kept the thought to himself. He wasn't there to engage in amateur art criticism. And how often do you, or, you know, make things float? The master of the orphanage, a squat woman with frizzy hair, stepped forward. Oh, not often at all, she said quickly. She wrung her hands, eyes darting back and forth. Perhaps once or twice a year? Linus coughed. A month, the woman amended. Silly me, I don't know why I said a year. Slip of the tongue, yes, once or twice a month. You know how it is. The older the children get, the more they do things. Is that right? Linus asked Daisy. Oh, yes, Daisy said. Once or twice a month and no more. She smiled beatifically at him and Linus wondered if she'd been coached on her answers before his arrival. It wouldn't be the first time it happened and he doubted it'd be the last. Of course, Linus said. They waited as his pen continued to scratch along the paper. He could fill their gazes on him, but he kept his focus on his words. Accuracy demanded attention. He was nothing but thorough, and his visit to this particular orphanage had been enlightening, to say the least. He needed to jot down as many details as he could do to complete his final report once he returned to the office. The master fussed over Daisy, pulling her unruly black hair back fixing it in place with plastic butterfly clips. Daisy was staring forlornly at her blocks on the floor, as if she wished they were levitating once more, her bushy eyebrows twitching. Do you have control over it? Linus asked. Before Daisy could open her mouth, the master said, Of course she does. We never allow her to. Linus held up his hand. I would appreciate, madam, if I could hear from Daisy herself. While I have no doubt you have her best interests in mind, I find that children such as Daisy here tend to be more forthright. The master looked to speak again, until Linus arched an eyebrow. She sighed as she nodded, taking a step back from Daisy. After scribbling a final note, Linus capped his pen and set it and the pad of paper back in his briefcase. He stood from his chair and crouched down before Daisy knees groaning in protest. Daisy gnawed on her bottom lip, eyes wide. Daisy, do you have control over it? She nodded slowly. I think so. I haven't hurt anyone since I was brought here. Her mouth twisted down. Not until Marcus. I don't like hurting people. He could almost believe that. No one said you did, but sometimes we can't always control the gifts we're given. And it's not necessarily the fault of those with said gifts. That didn't seem to make her feel better. Then whose fault is it? Linus blinked. 
Well, I suppose there are all sorts of factors. Modern research suggests extreme emotional states can trigger instincts such as yours. Sadness, anger, even happiness. Perhaps you were so happy you accidentally threw a cheer at your friend Marcus? It was the reason he'd been sent here in the first place. Marcus had been seen in hospital in order to have his tail looked after. It'd been bent at an odd angle, and the hospital had reported it directly to the department in charge of magical youth, as they were required to do. The report triggered an investigation, which was why Linus had been assigned to this particular orphanage. Yes, Daisy said. That's exactly it. Marcus made me so happy when he stole my colored pencils that I accidentally threw a chair at him. I see, Linus said. And if you would like to know what happens next, you can check this title out on the Libby app. Please join me here next week as I read from The Glass Ocean by Beatrice Williams. Thank you and have a great week.